Hi, once again, we welcome you to our podcast of Emmaus Road. Emmaus Road podcast is a part of the ministry of Crossway Ministries. Uh, we would like for you to visit our main website, which is notwithoutblood.com, notwithoutblood.com. On today's podcast and for the next couple of uh, podcasts, we're going to go over some foundational teachings that involve traditions and also involves maybe what some consider sacred cows in the church. The Word of God says the strength of sin is the law. So what I am trying to do to keep from sinning is causing me to sin more. The first thing you can look at, if you have the willpower to do certain things, if you have the willpower to not do certain things, the first thing that produces is pride. I don't do those. Or, you know, I don't see why you keep that bad habit. Uh, I'm not, I don't do those. Uh, it produces pride. It produces judgmentalism. You base your opinion on others. Well, I would never do that. Well, you haven't been in the same shoes they have walked, maybe. You haven't had the same life experience they have had. You have not had the same emotional attachment that they have had to a particular item. But to say that sin will increase by stepping over to grace is completely unscriptural. The correct scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 56, again, is the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So what most people are trying to do and maintain a regimen of do's and don'ts is actually producing uh, an attitude that I can do this better than Christ living through me can accomplish the same thing. I am squelching God living through me according to Galatians 2.20. <clears throat> I am keeping him tamped down. I am resisting and shutting down him living his life through me and I am going to live my life by keeping this regimen of do's and don'ts. It produces, again, arrogance, produces pridefulness, produces judgmentalism, it produces, in reality, unhappiness, because I am basing my life on what I do instead of what Jesus does living through me. <coughs> Jesus defeated and atoned for sin by his sacrifice on the cross, and he conquered death by his resurrection. So he defeated sin by his death, and then he conquered death by resurrection. The Christian life is all about righteous living and doing the works of God by the power of the indwelling Christ, not obsessing about sin or trying to live righteously by one's own human strength. Can't do it. Nobody born a man except Christ has ever done it or ever will do it. The second thing of why people resist and have misconceptions about grace. 
there are a few Bible verses used as proof that the law is still in effect. You know, people try to bring the old covenant law over in and mix it with the new covenant. Well, if God gave the old covenant, then everything, he, he's uh, in an area where it is permanent. That if he gave it then, it must be, it was good enough for them then, it will be good enough for now. He lives in infamy. He lives eternally. So the old covenant was given by God <clears throat> and it still is our basis for living today. Uh, that is an untruth and a tradition that needs to be done away with also. In Galatians 3.13, Paul says to the Galatians, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So what is our redemption? When we say we are redeemed and we sing, I am redeemed, what am I redeemed from? I am redeemed from the curse of the law. So what many people are trying to live by, the Holy Spirit says it is a curse. Again, this is not me. Just go to your Bible, Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the law has a curse attached to it and so many Christians are trying to faithfully live by a life mechanism that has a curse attached to it instead of living a life of God's grace. It says, being made a curse for us for is written, curses is Every man that hangeth from the tree. Galatians 4, 5. Galatians 4, verse 5. <clears throat> it also says, To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive adoptions as sons. So, you want to have redemption. You want to have salvation. And then go back to what the Word of God says that we were redeemed from. Christ died to redeem us from what we are trying to live our Christian life by. Can you see how that just totally doesn't make common sense, much less biblical or scriptural sense? <clears throat> Again, look at those two verses, Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what we were redeemed from, a curse that the law had attached to it because we could not live up to it. If you decided that you were going to live and that the Mosaic law was the handbook for Christianity, the word also says if you're going to live by the law, you've got to keep all of them. If you break one of them, you have broken all of them. So there's not a law you can keep to redeem you from the law that you broke. What is the answer? The only answer to that is God's grace. That's the reason for the new covenant, God's grace redeemed us from the curse that the law had attached to it. The enemy has done such a marvelous job of convincing people that the answer that they need for their downfall is to stay in that downfall and has made God's answer to 
the curse attached to the law. The enemy has made that <coughs> as something that is bad, that Christians should stay away from. They should not have anything to do with it because he is attached to that sin. And the reason it appeals to so many people is that we don't understand the atonement of Christ on the cross. We stay sin conscious even after salvation and not Christ conscious. We stay sin conscious because we do not accept what the Word of God says. John 1 29, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We don't accept and believe that the atonement that God provided through Jesus on the, His cross took away, did not cover as the Old Testament sacrifices did, but took away all the sins of all humanity in all the world. He did it one time. Hebrews says what? And then he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Sitting down is a sign of completeness. There was not a chair in the tabernacle. You can find everything else. You can find candlesticks. You can find showbread. You can find this, that, and that. But you cannot find a chair because the priest work under the old covenant was never done. Hebrews tells us that they had to make sacrifices continually and the work was never done. That Jesus did this one time and he sat down signifying and putting a period to what he said on the cross. It is finished. Until we can accept the true meaning of his finished work on the cross, then we cannot accept grace as his new covenant doctrine, as, he, as what God intended for grace to be, is that the end of the law came at Christ's atonement on the cross. Galatians again tells us, till the sea came. That was the length of the law from the inception of the law in Exodus 19 till Jesus died on the cross. That was the time span for the law. That was the time span that it was in existence for, Christ for believers. After the cross, it's grace, no law. Grace, no law. We live by Him living through us. If we don't, then we are saying to God, God, I think I can live this life on my own better than you can live through me this life that I'm supposed to live. What do you think you can do? Do you think you can live this Christian life more successful on your own? Or are you willing to give up all of your preconceived traditions, sacred cows, notions, and allow Christ to live his life through us? Uh, I hope you will continue to join us as we approach uh, other subjects on these foundational teachings of uh, concerning traditions, sacred cows in the body of Christ. Uh, again, visit our main website, notwithoutblood.com, and we thank you tremendously for uh, joining us for Emmaus Road Podcast. Mm -hmm.